Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this session, Decoding Azure OpenAI Costs and Capacity Challenges. My name is Anna. I'm an event planner for Reactor, joining you from Redmond, Washington. Before we start, I have some quick housekeeping. Please take a moment to review our code of conduct. We seek to provide a respectful environment for both our audience and presenters. While we absolutely encourage engagement in the chat, we ask that you please be mindful of your commentary, remain professional and on topic. Keep an eye on the chat. We'll be dropping helpful links and checking for questions for our presenters to answer live at the end of the session. The session is recorded and will be available to view on demand in 24 to 48 hours. I'll now turn it over to our presenters. Thank you. Hi, Jody. How are you? Hey, hey, man. How are you? Good morning. Um, good morning as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you, audience, for joining. And uh, myself and Judy will be presenting to you uh, decoding Azure OpenAI cost and the capacity challenges. My name is uh, Heyman, and I'm actually the global head of solution architecture team with 2B Cloud. Judy, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Ahmed. I'm uh, Judy. I'm a FinOps team leader on 2B Cloud in the last uh, one and a half year. Awesome. So with that, we'll dive deeper into the uh, cost and the capacity challenges. Like I said, um, you know, I'm the global head of the uh, solution architecture team with the 2B Cloud. And this is our agenda today. We will basically walk through the OpenAI, what it is, and a cost implication of using OpenAI. We will walk you through the strategies to optimize the OpenAI cost. And we'll walk through what exactly is an OpenAI API. Duty is gonna walk you through the pricing model. How do we do the billing? At the end, you will see a live demo of a Azure OpenAI billing and essentially a governance and the cost recommendations. So with that, we'll go to the next slide and dive deeper into it. So first of all, let me talk through who we are, right? We are a top global cloud partner. We have a AWS advanced partner and we are an Azure expert partner. Now with that, you know, we have achieved those goals with number of numerous certifications and we have executed projects uh, 400 plus with uh, customers. And we have, uh, we are a born in the cloud company. Essentially, we work with the uh, startup companies, we are digital native, and we are focused on uh, startup companies and with their mindset, we are enabling them. We provide global support excellence uh, and our excellence model is uh, at top of the tier with 10 minutes average response time. We have a high risk, uh, response from our customers uh, who basically give us uh, recommendations for all the services we provide. Next slide, please. So let's dive deeper into the Azure OpenAI. What is an Azure OpenAI? Azure OpenAI is a managed service developed in collaboration between Microsoft. And it's essentially used to uh, build and deploy large language models. Now, OpenAI, it provides, to, what benefit does it provide to the customer? It basically allows you to use Microsoft services such as GitHub Copilot, Power BI, Designer, and Office 365 in a way that enables your business and to make it easy for you to consume the AI services and scale them to the production volume. Next slide, please. So, What's the problem with using all the OpenAI service? Customer use the OpenAI, most of the time, they want to ensure that the costs are limited as well as to the budgets and the monitoring uh, that they have set up in the uh, Azure. Now, the, one of the challenges with OpenAI is that there is no start and a stop button. So essentially, you have to ensure that you have put in the right best practices and the controls to ensure your open AI costs do not go out of control. So that's the problem statement we will solve for you today. Next slide, please. This is an architectural strategy call, uh, approach to optimize your open AI costs. What this is showing you is that a, we have an, any infrastructure that you build out, 
to use OpenAI, let's have an API management service. What does API management do? Basically, API management will mediate your invocation of OpenAI service across um, you know, different zones, different regions, and it ensures that you know, anything that you're calling has, it, uh, is authenticated using appropriate authentication services. So that's the second strategy to pursue. Now, in all along the lines, you want to ensure that you are logging and tracking your tokens that is being used for OpenAI. You want to make sure that you're, you're understanding the uh, uh, pricing model for all the uh, OpenAI services that you use. You want to monitor your cost. You want to monitor uh, your storage solutions. You want to um, ensure that you optimize your token usage and implement a rate limiting feature. You will see in the next slide, how do you actually implement the rate limiting feature? The other piece is most important is the securing your API key. If you have somebody else who is using your API key, it is likely that your cost will or, or may overrun because of uh, somebody's hacked into your environment. Next slide, please. So with, these are the uh, rate limiting best practices. Essentially, you want to ensure that your resource count is per region limited to the, what's recommended. You want to set the max and the minimum token based on the use case. As I mentioned, you use per region model, set the request per minute to six RPM per uh, thousand uh, tokens per minute. Manage your quota in a way that's basically a representation of your workload or the model you're planning to use. Use different workload increasing pattern, uh, however, uh, and implement a retrial logic within your application uh, in a certain way that you're using the retry wisely and it doesn't go out of control. The last you can do is provision throughput. Um, uh, Azure OpenAI provides you to, allows you to basically provision your throughput based on a calculator and uh, you, could, you will see that in a uh, further demo as well. With that, I will hand it off to Dudi, who is gonna walk you through the details of each and every best practices I spoke to. Dudi? Back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, insight uh, presented. Um, in my part, I'm going to talk about Azure pricing and Azure how to reduce pricing and actually how we can figure out what we are actually we are paying for. Frank's first thing that you need to know, Azure or OpenAI, it's expensive service. Uh, it's a... Uh, if we talking about uh, second, if we talking about the pricing model, um, actually I, Azure OpenAI based on a token. What is a token? Think about ev token is a equal to average to four English characters. Uh, you charge by the prompt token and the completion token. The cost token unit cost is based on one thousand token. So for for example, you can see here in, on the pricing sheet. Uh, once you, uh, you 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 buy a higher contacts, the pricing token it's uh, double accordingly. For example, if you if you charge by three point five turbo token, the price is 0 0.00815, and you if you uh, go into the contact of sixteen k, the charge is zero point zero zero three. Uh, how to understand my Azure OpenAI billing? This is like more of, of a general question, how to understand Azure billing, but we're focusing on Azure OpenAI. Azure cost management is like a great tool to understand your usage and what's going on based on your resource level and uh, subscri subscription or tagging strategy that you apply in every Azure uh, resources. But once you want to understand what I'm, what I'm building for based on my usage behavior, here you need to drill down in more like uh, uh, drill down uh, analysis of that Azure uh, supply to you. Uh, and this billing, this uh, report's called usage and charge report. And uh, uh, this is, um, I think for my opinion, it's a necessary report to understand 
how you use you use your token because in Azure uh, cost management you see only the cost and not the usage of your token. Once you want to understand if you want to to purchase commitment, to understand that you over the budget or below the budget, that you once you set up the 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 the, the cluster of the the Azure Open AI. So how you get this usage and charge uh, uh, report? Uh, in Azure Cost Management, you uh, go to the usage and char charge type. You select the, rele um, the relevant uh, months. Please do remember that this, this data is updated once in a day. Customer that coming from AWS that used to that the, the billing data is coming from like once in an hour. Here it's more about like once in a, in a day. And then you can uh, click over it, like prepare the document, and the spreadsheet will be downloaded to your uh, uh, local uh, computer. How this uh, um, uh, spreadsheet look like and what we can get uh, from there. Uh, actually, okay, guys, so I prepared in advance uh, a data from a real customer. This is a demo data. And uh, here I can show you how you can analyze your uh, usage and data and to actually see what is the quantity of the token that you are really using. So here you see a lot of rows and a lot of lines, seems like a mess. The really important things that we need from that uh, uh, spreadsheet is the date, uh, the meter category, and here we can filter by the cognitive uh, services, and uh, the meter name, this is the, like the line item uh, of each of type of uh, open AI uh, services. Here is the quantity. This is like the actually quantity of the token you are already like billed for. And the cost, this is the pricing. This is the unit price. It's actually pretty much important to understand what type, how you build by your uh, uh, pricing model. For example, for 3.5 turbo token in, uh, in uh, East US, you are paying 0 0.002. And another another thing is that it's also important to uh, uh, to take into the pivot table. It's the unit measure and the resource group. If you want to uh, uh, fill there and build perspective by that, you can also add the uh, um, the region and the subscription and things like that. But uh, this is like the most important thing. I uh, already uh, rebuilt. Uh, um, a pivot table based on that uh, 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 metrics, and I create like uh, the whole month's uh, calculation based on usage hour, usage hour, and cost. This is like the metrics. This is the, like the um, uh, and the token. And here you can you can see a couple of things. First of all, uh, in each of uh, you, uh, OpenAI, you have a different, uh, um, a different pricing model. So here you can see like the differences of, of what you are paying for based on the token itself. And you have the cost. And this is like reflecting if you multiply the pricing model per the number of the token, uh, you can find the cost of, uh, of, of it. So, if you if you if you look in like based on one month, you can see that in this demo, uh, we have uh, days that we have like a low peak, for example, low below one hundred thousand token, and a high peak is like uh, above one one million token per day, and actually this is the pricing model, and we can also build a KPI based on that. If we divided the number of token divided by the, the pricing, we have like uh, uh, what we are paying for, what model we are paying for the most based on 1,000 tokens. For example, uh, 1,000 token in certain day, we, the cost was uh, uh, below 0 0.024 and so on. And by analyze that, we know the behavior of the token usage. And then by that, you can analyze and understanding if you want to make a commitment, because if we have like a low peak and a high peak, we need to find the, the positive ROI. And I think this is the most important thing that 
we know how to analyze our usage and and we can play with the perspective based on subscription based on resource group based on tagging or whatever that you have um, but from that example we can determine what commitment we want to do uh, with um, Azure uh, representative uh, and we don't want to be over commitment and we don't want to be below the commitment we want to get like the positive ROI that give us the best pricing that we can get um, this is I think all the how we can analyze the usage and uh, cost and usage data and uh, let's go back to the slide again so recommendation um, first step is the visual the data itself and understand what you are paying for this is the first step that we're doing on the live demo and uh, this is a crucial part to understand your use in, in behavior it's related to created uh, uh, um, a, a budget alert and a budget and forecasting before you going into the, the uh, creating the model once you have a budget alert we will we'll never be surprised about the charging because once uh, you get the notification about that you can read down if you have any issue with the amount of the API call and on the prompt or completion and, and, and things like that. Use the right model. And we see in the spreadsheet, we have, we have a chat, we have a, um, a 3.5 and 4 and 16K and 32K. If you don't need more than 60K, uh, 4K uh, 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 text, Please choose that because once you go, you, you you're paying for 60k, you, you, your price will be double. And um, caching, implement caching strategy is the very, I think it's a great way to avoid repeated request to open AI. And uh, once you have like a repeating request to your API, if you implement the caching, you uh, um, reduce the amount of data that uh, uh, your uh, prompt uh, are uh, using. Optimized cost, uh, optimized token usage. Uh, keep close on how many tokens each request are used. If you see, if you see that you can use token more efficiently, this is like we're going back to the first part. Once we understand how many tokens we are using, and we forecasting like lower amount of token that goes through our APIs, and we need to understand what is the problem and how we can make it more efficient and volume discount and commitment plan. This is like, I think the best pillar of how you can uh, reduce the amount of, uh, of, uh, of recharge based on the token. And uh, if we contact uh, Azure representative, they can offer us a uh, commitment based on our usage. Just keep remember that basic, uh, most, in most cases they are offer you um, a commitment uh, based on the hourly usage. So if you have a peak or let's say on, on the middle of the week, you're using more of the AB of the usage of the Azure Open AI and the end of the week, the service go down, most likely, most likely it's not going to be, be the best offer for you. So it's something that you need to understand how to analyze that, something that we do on the demo itself and then see that the, the uh, offering that AWS based on the commitment will be fit for your uh, uh, needs. I think that's basically it. Um, if you have any questions, uh, um, please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, Hemet, do you want to um, uh, say something to the end? Uh, Dudi, thank you again. Uh, yeah, thanks everyone for joining. And uh, you know, if you have questions, we have a barcode for you in the next slide. Feel free to reach out to us. We are happy to take any questions and help you through the journey of using an open AI and rein in on the cost and any capacity constraints you may have. So thanks again for joining and you have a wonderful day.